First of all, you should have already done flip 16. If you have not, stop right now and go back and do flip 16. Otherwise, a lot of this will not make any sense to you. Uh, the timeline of history, the thousand years between when Solomon builds the first temple and the last temple is destroyed by the Romans is the time period we're going to cover. And you really need to watch flip 15 first and take some good notes. The test is going to cover a thousand years of history. There will be a map as usual. It will be Palestine in the time of Jesus, not just where things are, but also why they're important. There will be a men's section of the test, a women's section of the test, a section where I ask you to identify different religious, political, and social groups. As always, lots of vocabulary in a theology class. And then there will be a section on the Babylonian exile and how that fundamentally changes Judaism. So it's a before and after section. And the answers are B for before or A for after. I will explain that on a later flip assignment. There's always some true false questions. And last year I did a lectionary section on this test and I am looking at doing that again, though I might change the format from last year. So first we'll talk about the men or take some time to write down each of these men, leave some space between each one. You might wanna pause the video while you do that. The only ones that you've read about so far are Ahab and Hezekiah and, oh, and Elijah. And Ahab and Hezekiah are both kings and the stories of these two kings really offer a contrast in how the author of the Bible, or this section of the Bible, is contrasting the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Ahab is a king in the north, and like the vast majority of the kings in the north, he is seen as bad. He's turned away from the house of David. He's not faithful to the covenant. And the stories of Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel um, kind of demonstrate the evil of the North, which for the author of the Deuteronomic history or the books of um, Joshua, Judges, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, um, sees the evil of the North as the reason why God allowed them to be destroyed by the, um, the Syrians. Hezekiah, in contrast, is a king in the South. He's a descendant of King David, and he has... Um, defied the Assyrians, but he's also seen as a very good king who has brought about religious reforms. He's obeyed the covenant. He consults his prophet. And Hezekiah, when he's attacked by the Assyrians, is able to survive their siege. And there's some more details about his story that I'm going to highlight in class and actually show you some images from modern day Jerusalem that relate to that. But again, Ahab is king in the north. Um, he's evil. He's corrupt. He steals a man's vineyard. He worships Baal. And he's seen as the typical king of the north who is gone astray from Yahweh. And that's why God allowed the north to be destroyed. Whereas Hezekiah is the king in the south. He's obedient to God. He's faithful to the covenant. And so God allows his kingdom to survive the Assyrians. Uh, Elijah is the prophet who is come to face down Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And Elijah and Elisha have a contentious relationship with Ahab and Jezebel. Um, it's Elijah who predicts the downfall of Ahab's house and anoints Elisha to continue his work. And then um, other people step in to bring down the house of Ahab and Jezebel. So, so far you should have some sort of definition for Ahab, Hezekiah, and Elijah. And you might want to jot down any tidbits that you recall from doing these assignments. Um, you did these scripture assignments in class about um, Hezekiah getting sick and Ahab doing all these awful things and Elijah's showdown against the prophets of Baal. Uh, religious and political groups, um, again, pause the tape or pause the video and go ahead and write these down. 
we have not talked about any of these yet. There is one more that I don't know if it's in this section or if it's on the map, but there's the Samaritans, S-A-M-A-R-I-T-A-N-S. And the Samaritans are the people who are brought in by the Assyrians to replace the northern tribes, and they adopt the religion of the Jews, and the Jews actually never accept them and hate them, and the Samaritans in return hate them back. A lot of big vocab words. Again, pause the video, write these down, leave a lot of space in between each one. I defined one of these in clip 15, and that's Hellenization. Excuse me, I defined two of them, diaspora and Hellenization. Uh, diaspora refers to the scattering of the Jewish people outside of the Promised Land because of the Babylonian exile, because of the Assyrian conquest, because of the Persian Empire controlling Palestine, um, because of the effects of the Greeks and the Romans on Israel's history. The other word I defined in hell is Hellenization. When the Greek Empire or when the Greeks took over a place, they didn't send people off into exile. Instead, what they did is they tried to impose their culture and their language, their philosophy, and their religion on the people they conquered, which generally worked in most places, but this led to a revolt by the Jews, and that actually led to a period of Jewish independence just a couple hundred years before Jesus. There's a lot of dates, and I want you to be familiar with the timeline and the big events in Israel's history. I'm not going to just give you a bunch of numbers to put in or give you a bunch of blanks to fill in numbers. I'm not going to do this as I did the last test where I'm just asking you to identify empires, but some sort of combination of all those things. So you want to be really familiar with the timeline. Again, pause, maybe write these down, and maybe jot down from your notes yesterday or from your notes on flip 15 what you... Um, what each of these dates is important for. I would also add 598 BCE, although I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one. Uh, women, Huldah you have read about, Jezebel you read about, Ruth and Orpah we're going to cover later on, Susanna and Judith and Esther, I'm not sure if they're going to make it on the test, and there's one more that you need to add, Athalia, A-T-H-A-L-I-A-H, -A -A Athalia. So Jezebel, as I mentioned before, is the wife of King Ahab, and she's seen as being equally evil as he is. She's the one who actually writes letters um, falsely accusing somebody of treason, and that gets him executed, and that allows her husband Ahab to take over the land. There's also a passage in Kings that talks about how Jezebel was killing the prophets of God. Um, Huldah, we're going to read about soon, and Ruth and Orpah, you will read about a little bit later. Again, probably Susanna on the test, maybe Judith, maybe Esther, but be sure to add Athalia, A T H. A-L-I-A-H. Again, pause the video, write these down. These are the sections of the map that you're going to have to identify, not just the locations of them, but why they're important. So Decapolis, Idumea, Galilee, Judea, and Samaria and the bodies of water should be pretty easy by now. You should know where the Sea of Galilee is. You should know where the Dead Sea is. You should know where the Jordan River is. Be able to locate them on a blank map and also know why they are important in the time of Jesus.